Although I've been tinkering with model railroading for nearly 60 years, I've just recently started using pink foam on my layout. So let me give you my thoughts right here. Hi, I'm Tom Kovicek, and this is Tom Strains and Things. This channel was created to help other modelers who are in need of guidance in pursuing their dream of building a model railroad. And today's train of thought will be on pink foam. I'm going to give you a few pros and cons on it, what I have experienced so far. And I've only gotten as far as laying track on my first module. So it's a newbie perspective of it. But I think it pertains to everybody, and there's probably more pros and more cons than what I have. Since I'm inexperienced with it, I'm sure that you'll be able to fill in the blanks and tell me some more pros and cons. Just put them in the comments down here. So here we go. Let's start off with the obvious. It's lightweight. I'm 70 years old, and I can carry a 4x8 sheet out of Home Depot on my own with no problem <laughs> unless a big gust of wind comes. So that's pretty good and it fits easily in there. And if, if you have a smaller vehicle that you have to cut it, there's scribe lines on there for 24 and 16 inches. So it makes it easier to get in a vehicle if you have a smaller vehicle and can't get a full four by eight sheet of anything in there. The next thing is it's inexpensive. It's under $20 for a 4x8 sheet. And if you're doing modules like mine right here, one piece covered up this whole section right there. And I even had a little bit left over. So that is pretty good. 20 bucks. It was 19 something for a 4x8 by one. There are places where you can get it two inches can't get it two inches where i'm at in fact where i was in naples uh it took a long time for me to find a four by eight sheet all i found was a two by two foot sheet that was nearly five dollars which was ridiculous it is inexpensive as far as terrain goes this stuff is amazing because you could put in lay out a one inch layer of it and say your track is at zero you could go minus elevation and plus elevation easily it's easy to cut and that's the main reason why i got this i have one inch over here i have two inches over here because i need a little bit more elevation below the track level but it's easy to cut and form what used to take me hours upon hours to create a terrain by putting in cut it first of all cutting cardboard strips and then gluing them with hot glue and forming a form and then getting plaster cloth the messy plaster cloth and putting the plaster cloth over there and then the plaster of Paris over top of that. It used to take hours and it was very messy. But this stuff right here, all you need is a knife and a brush and you could cut anything that you want. And the pieces that you cut out to get your negative elevation, you could put in the top. I have several pieces that I used around the top over here that I have left over. And I have pieces from the module that I just put up where I could use as plus elevation. The possibilities are endless with the terrain and it's easy to carve. Like I said, it's easy to carve and I'll show you what I use with it. So far on this module, I've used these two tools here, a knife and a wire brush. And I'll pop up a couple of pictures over here to show you what I did with it. It was really easy, really good sharp knife, cuts it. And I also cut my pieces with this knife also. Now I do have a foam cutter that I showed you when I was 
creating this module over here and that's still packed away in a box someplace and I'll probably use that once I find it but for right now I'm using this knife and this brush I'm sure that there's other tools that you could use to get the desired contour of your foam but so far this is all I've needed the one thing that I don't like about the cork is when I'm laying track the way I did it before, I had cork roadbed or cork underlayment over top of plywood. And when I wanted to lay the flex track in, all I would do is take my pin vise and start a pilot hole for the nail and then just push it down into the plywood. With the cork and the foam, you can't do that because there's not enough to grab onto because the nails aren't long enough. Now you could do it with T-pins, like I showed in a previous video, just to hold it into place, but you can't ballast it in with the T-pins. As you know, the holes in the ties are dead center, and you usually line up the track on the center line of the two pieces of cork. So you don't have anything to put your nail into you have dead space right there and you just have a little bit of foam what I had to do is put holes on the edges closer to the rail so I could grab into the cork and I'll show you some pictures of it right up here that is the biggest drawback now I have yet to do the ballasting I'll be doing that later on next week and I'll let you know how that turns out. It's been a bear to keep the track in place, except for using the T-pins for the radius of the turn. I found an advantage and disadvantage when doing my turnouts. And I'll show them to you right here. The advantage is you could cut it out. Now, this is one that I did with the two-inch foam that I showed you last year. And this is the one that I did recently on this one last week. And what I did, I made sure that I went beyond the turnout and added some track to it and then cut it off. I soldered this in right here on both ends so I had some extra and then cut out this piece of foam like that. And so anytime I need to do maintenance on it, all I have to do is pop it out. It's not quite a disadvantage, but you have to rethink of how you're going to mount your mechanism that operates your turnout. On this one here, I have a servo and this one was pretty easy. I mounted the servo in the foam itself on a piece of furring strip. And basically the same way that I did a tortoise switch machine, brought the wire up through the center and have the, the the servo right there the wire goes down if I need to put any relays or anything on that it will go underneath the layout but that's what it looks like there this is on the two inch piece of foam where oops this way I just had to cut out a little bit right here for the arm of the servo but if you need to you can even cut this arm in half you don't need the full arm to attach the wire to it so i have yet to figure out how i'm going to do it on here i could mount this the same way but i'll have a little bit hanging down on the bottom i'm not quite sure if i'm going to do it that way or not or I'm going to put it underneath the plywood. Uh, I'm making up a jig right now to, to test it a couple of different ways. This is how I'm going to be doing all my turnouts on the modules. I prepared my crossover by soldering the tracks all together. I put an extra track over here and an extra track over here. I soldered everything together. So what I could do is just place it on the foam and then 
put my road bed underneath it and pro and what I'll do is I'll put the cork underlayment here so it's just one big piece cut it rectangular similar to the shape of this crossover set it on the foam and then cut the foam out so I'll be able to glue it all together and then bring it up as one piece and that way I'll have all my track feeders over here on all four points right here and it'll all be self-contained in one piece as I said before there's probably more pros and cons of using the foam it's but since I'm new to this that's what I have observed so far later on down the road when I start doing the landscaping and ballasting and putting my terrain in and everything else I'll probably have a little bit more thoughts on the foam so if you have any pros and cons like I said before put it in the comments let me know about it maybe I'll discuss that later on so until the next time, we'll see ya.